All right, folks, today we are diving into one of the most heated debates in the world of gaming. That's right, it's console versus PC. Now, I have been a console gamer for the majority of my life, bouncing between the latest Xbox and PlayStation consoles. And then in 2019, I made the switch to PC gaming and I have absolutely loved it. However, that isn't to say that there aren't things I love about console gaming. So today we are gonna be comparing the pros and cons of both platforms to help you decide whether you should buy that new PlayStation or Xbox, or if you're just better off investing in a PC setup. And by the way, all of the products that I mentioned in today's video will be linked in both the video as well as the description down below. All right, with that out of the way, let's kick things off with some of the big pros of console gaming. First is affordability. Arguably the most obvious advantage of console gaming is that it's just affordable, especially when you start out from scratch. For no more than 500 bucks, I can have the latest Xbox or the latest PlayStation along with everything I need to just start playing. PC gaming can get expensive very quickly. Even if you have a, a $500 gaming build, you still need other parts to actually use the thing. You've gotta have a monitor to plug in. You gotta have a decent keyboard and a mouse, a mouse pad and some speakers or a headset if you want sound. Your $500 budget gaming PC suddenly turns into like a 900 to $1,000 gaming PC. Another advantage of console gaming is just how consistent and simple it is because the hardware is, is the same across every console. When I buy a game, I don't have to worry about whether or not my hardware is compatible. Basically, everybody's on in a, a nice, even playing field. Whereas with PC gaming, especially with some of these more graphically intense games, you generally want to pay attention to the system requirements before you buy it, just to make sure that your PC can even run the game, especially if you are playing on a more budget friendly build. And that is where ease of use comes in. Consoles are just a breeze to use. You hook it up to your TV, you open the game, you're good to go. And that's like starting out with the console. Sure, you have the occasional system updates that get pushed out, but there isn't really any thinking involved. Whereas with PC gaming, especially if this is like a custom build PC, you have all these different parts from different manufacturers trying to work together, which means there's uh, not just gonna be the game updates that we all deal with, but then you've got driver updates from the various parts and ensuring that everything is compatible and working smoothly. For many, that extra maintenance is kind of part of the fun with PCs. It's like keeping up on an old classic car that you restored or built. Uh, but for many who just wanna sit down and have a consistently good, easy gaming experience without having to think, consoles are a very attractive path. Exclusive titles are also another perk of console gaming. While most games on Xbox or PS5 tend to be available on PC, there are certain titles that simply will not release on PC. For example, the other day, I wanted to buy uh, NHL 23, and I was very sad to learn that EA does not make it available on PC, nor do they have plans to. Some titles will start as a console exclusive, like Spider-Man, and then will eventually be released on PC, but uh, you know, there's no guarantee on those and there's a long wait period. It's just not ideal. So if you have certain titles that you know you want to play, definitely look that up ahead of time to see where you can play those because that could be a major factor in not only deciding between console and PC, but between Xbox and PlayStation as they often have their own exclusive titles. The other big perk of these new consoles is that they are also built-in entertainment systems. They're, they're, they're streaming devices. There's no reason to go out and buy a streaming device like a Roku for your TV if you've already got the console hooked up to it. Both consoles have more traditional remotes that you can buy if you don't like using the controller that it comes with for things like Netflix or watching YouTube. And while a PC can technically do all this, it's typically not hooked up to your main TV where you like to sit and watch movies, nor is it as intuitive for people who, again, just wanna sit down on the couch and relax. So now let's talk about PCs. As a current PC gamer myself, I can tell you that there are some pretty solid reasons you might wanna choose a gaming PC over a console. One of the biggest things for me is that you can really make your PC your own. You can either do what I did and just jump all in and learn how to build a PC and, and that's a, a whole fun adventure in of itself. Or if you're not quite ready for that, you can go and buy a pre-built PC and it's like bowling balls. They all look different. They have their own style, only it's on steroids because you've got RGB lighting and 
uh, just the way you design it can be very custom to your personality. And even then you're free to build and upgrade it to fit your specific gaming needs. If you need better graphics, swap out the GPU. If you're running out of space, add more storage. Do you know that you're gonna be playing a lot of racing sim games? Invest in an ultra wide monitor for that more immersive gameplay. Plus, if you go all out on a high-end gaming PC, you'll be looking at top-notch graphics, quicker load times, and buttery smooth gameplay. Yes, you're going to be investing a lot more money than a console player, but if you are someone who is just looking for the absolute best of the best graphics and speeds, gameplay, all that, PC is always going to lead that race because you are in control of the hardware, not at the mercy at whatever Sony or Microsoft decided to use for that hardware. One of my favorite perks of PC gaming is that my library of games will always just work and grow. Like any PC game that I played as a kid back in 1998, I can play my PC today. While backwards compatibility is becoming more common with these newer consoles, there's still some limitations and there's no guarantee that your old games will one day work on future consoles. So with the exception of those handful of exclusive console titles, PC players generally have a much bigger library of games to pick from, including a lot of indie games that never even make it to you know, the official Xbox or PlayStation store. Another perk that I love is I don't have to deal with all the subscription crap that console players have to deal with. And I'm talking about Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. If I wanna play some multiplayer on a game, I can just play it. Like there's no extra cost. Whereas many titles that uh, these console players are playing, you have to purchase this ongoing subscription in order to unlock the ability to do multiplayer. And that's lame. Another thing I should quickly note is that if you are wanting to go the console route solely because you just love controllers and you can never see yourself playing on a mouse and keyboard, well, you can bring those controllers over to PC as well. Whether it's an Xbox controller, a PS5 controller, or even some generic knockoff, all of these controllers can be connected to your PC. So then it's like you're playing console, but your machine's performance can potentially be on steroids. And certainly a major perk of a PC is its multifunctionality. It doesn't just have to be used for gaming. It can also be your PC for work or content creation, whatever it is. So when you factor in that $2,000 MacBook you're thinking of buying along with your $500 PS5, suddenly a $2,500 PC doesn't look so expensive. So those are my pros and cons of PC gaming versus console gaming, but I'm interested in hearing what you all have to say about this and if there's anything that I'm missing. Are you, are you team PC or are you team console? Let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, if you do decide to pull the trigger on PC gaming and you need a new gaming monitor, check out this guide, which breaks down everything that you need to know when you are buying your next monitor. Enjoy.